Hey, 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 what's up, guys? Node Investor here, and we are live coming to you on another late night edition of these wonderful, ever exciting, always volatile, never resting, never tired cryptocurrency market space. What's up, guys? So, you know. It's hard to believe that was only last weekend when we did a five hour exhausting live stream, which I said I'd never start the words with. I'm just going to do a 30 minute live stream again. But this time I'm serious. Regardless of what the market does while I'm on live stream, I am not going to go for five hours. So just so you know, you guys are actually going to get some rest tonight. You're going to be able to hang out, chill out, do whatever it is you do when you're not listening to me or watching the charts, which, man, what do you do when you're not listening to me or watching the charts? <laughs> you can listen to someone else's live stream. That's what you do. Oh, man. So let's check it out. So Bitcoin. Let's talk Bitcoin. And yes, we're going to talk Neo. And we're going to talk Bitcoin Cash. And everything else. So, all right, cool. Let's do it. You're watching my old video. My old video when you're not watching. That's cool. You're coding. That's cool. What's your best way to get pricing alarms? I like that. I'm gonna answer that question. So, let's do it. Let's get to the charts, and then we'll uh, start looking at some questions here, and we'll see where we go. But man, Bitcoin. So, we went straight up from the bottom so just to kind of recap if you didn't get my newsletter i kind of covered this a little bit so hang with me but it's pretty unusual to see these big v bottoms i mean that that's really rare to be honest with you and if you look at the daily chart you know everybody was calling the top here and, and rightly so there was a lot of overheatedness and we had that big reversal day and once we broke that six thousand it was straight down and honestly i expected a bounce to maybe 67 6900 and then i thought we we're gonna turn around and rally and everything was kind of pointing that way we started to pause a little bit but we just blasted right through 7k kept going and so we went to new highs just a couple days ago and now we're pausing and right now i'll zoom in in the four hours the four hour looks a little scary but the daily chart is finally the pause i was waiting for it's like we're going straight up and so two things yes i thought we were going to bounce and then pull back and see a second dip which is usually what you see maybe retest the low maybe finish at a lower high and then start going up and i wanted to scoop up some more here now that we didn't however i do not want to see another dip towards 5000 because if we did we would have a massive double top in place if we just went straight down here and this would do a lot of technical damage to the charts meaning it would be really hard if we break if we even if we did a double top chances are we would bounce and then we would break it just because the chart would just be that bearish so i know you want the dip i know you want to buy at 5000 or 4800 or whatever you guys were waiting on but trust me we don't want to see it dip down below this again because it's going to just create an ugly pattern that's going to be very bearish. And so what we could see, which wouldn't be bad, is to see a dip that ends, you know, somewhere down in this range or even a little higher and then creates this higher low pattern and we go, right? That's ideal. We don't want to see that big deep dip. So if you missed 5,500... I mean, yeah, if, if it comes back down to it, I might take a shot at it, but I'm going to be very cautious. I would not like that. So that's what it is. Um, we're going straight up. I think we're due for a pause. And in my newsletter, I said there's two scenarios, the bearish one, which I just outlined, and the bullish one, which is we rally somewhere along the line. We pull back for a day or two, and then it's off to the races, and we make new highs over 8,000. So I'm still in that camp. I'm thinking that's the case. and I. And I'm leaning that way because the fundamentals are just so strong. There's just a lot of demand right now. There is the futures, which is coming here pretty soon. 
that potentially will lead to an ETF that will lead to more hedge funds buying in that will lead to big money institutions coming in. And I think 2018 is going to be the year where you see mass adoption across the retail investor space. I still talk to a lot of investors who are not cryptocurrency investors, but are very big longtime veterans in stocks and options and commodities. And they're just, you know, they're starting to hear the rumors and the news and they're starting to hear about Jack Dorsey's square and they're starting to see all the noise on CNBC. So they're coming. And I think 2018 is going to see more upside because of that. So I think the fundamental picture is still strong and getting stronger. And so I think this leg, this bull's got more legs to go. And so that being said, let's zoom in. The daily chart looks fine. The 10 EMA is still down around 71, 7,200 bucks. So even if we pulled back all the way to that point, um, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, if we see a big volume break to the downside, maybe. But right now, it's just a constructive fullback. Now, on the four-hour chart, you know, if you start looking at the details and starting to get in there, um, I've been watching this all day today, this little bit rounding. We had that big shakeout last night, my, my last night. And then we had the big pop, and it just looked like, okay, maybe that was a shakeout. And here we were hitting that sub-8,000 wall. We were really close. And I thought we were going to break out any minute. And I was like, here we go. Let's do the 8,000 party. And then we just started to sell off. And it's looking like a little bit of a double top here. It looked like we were about to break down. We broke that 7,500 mark very briefly just a little while ago. That's what prompted this live stream. And now we're starting to bounce a little bit. And uh, so if you look at the technicals under this, right, the RSI, since that top has really started to get weak and we finally broke here earlier, we finally hit that extreme level to the low. So I think we're bouncing pretty good here. And same thing on the four hour chart, you can see the RSI on that second bounce was pretty weak, pulling in, but now it's kind of reset and, you know, it's just kind of hanging around. So if we just kind of bounce around here as long as these, these most recent lows hold here in the next few hours, this 7,500, maybe down to 7,400 range continues to hold, I think it's okay, right? And like I said, the 10, the dailies, it's still fine. And it just needs to sit tight and let this moving average catch up. It's kind of reset the RSI a little bit. So from an RSI perspective, if we start to hit higher, we've got plenty of room to run before this thing gets overheated. And right now we're at 63. And if it went back up to 80, that's going to correlate with an eight or $9,000 price if it gets to 80. Because, I mean, it sounds like a lot, but think about this. From this point, 7,600 or so, $9,000 is 17%. I mean, that's a decent return, but that's not like astronomical by any means. Hell, we saw Neo do 40% today. So, you know, it's doable. I mean, but it's, it's had a good run here in the last couple of days. There's no doubt about that. We were well overdue for a pullback. Looking at this daily chart, even if you don't take the extreme bottom, but if you take this first candle, this green candle, in four days, we peaked up at 38%, you know, closed 35%. That's a very strong move for a $100 billion market cap Bitcoin. So um, it was due for a, for a pause pullback. We're seeing that, but I think all the dips are just being bought up right now. We're starting to see the dips being bought so far. So that's good. What's bad about this is those stinking altcoins just do not want to be in lockstep with Bitcoin yet. And it's just this constant tug where, with the exception of a few names, Bitcoin pops, altcoins pull in, altcoins, you know, Bitcoin pulls down a little bit and you get a little altcoin rally and there's still the big Bitcoin versus Bitcoin cash scenario. We saw Bitcoin cash had a very nice pump here just in the last couple of hours with bitcoin pulling in you could just see the inverse um and that's a decent pop i mean just in the last several hours you know it was up at 1.30 percent overnight we were up 25 40 percent i mean just some big moves so bitcoin cash is actually looking like it wants to keep going here for a little bit but it's just hard to say because everything is just so correlated to bitcoin right now if bitcoin pumps some more if it starts to rally if bitcoin goes over eight you're going to see bitcoin cash pull in um, so it's just hard to make that trade right now. Just depends which one you like better. Um, and I like Bitcoin better, just so you know. But I did, just so you know, I did trade Bitcoin Cash today. This, you know, just kind of a, a very short several hour trade. But I saw this big pump last night. I missed that, pulled in, and it started to break out today. And uh, I caught this little move up, and not all of it, 
you know, you got to take profits up the way into the strength. But I caught some of that, so it was a pretty decent couple-hour trade. So it's pulling in right now. If you like Bitcoin Cash and you want to do some trading, if I were doing it, this prior top, it's sitting right there right now. It's hitting the moving average. RSI came in. Ideally, this is a good pullback entry if you like it with a very tight stop just below the most recent lows. That's like 2%, 3% if you want to give it some room. Um, but if Bitcoin just gets strong here, it's going to just keep pulling in, in my opinion. So let's see what else. Neo, and I'll cover the other big three here. Neo, wow. Neo, good old Neo. Still looking good, still looking strong. I'm still holding my Neo. And so here's what I like. Let me switch over to the USD chart because this is what I've been watching for the last couple of weeks. Look at how tight Neo USD has been. And I think I mentioned this the other night in my last video. It's just this is getting very strong, very tight, and I was getting very bullish. And we saw that pop today. And regardless of what drove it, whether it was news or rumors or some flyer that said three days, guys, this is just a good breakout. It's a good pop. And right now it's holding the breakout. And I'm liking it. Neo. It's been quiet for so long, and uh, we'll see. So far, the pullback and the little reset here is very constructive, um, and I'm liking it. So if you like it, keep an eye on it here. It's starting to consolidate. I'd like to see a couple more hours of some pausing and relaxing so that the four-hour chart doesn't look so overbought and so that the moving average on the daily catches up a little bit, but it's got more room to run in my opinion. But, you know, in this market, who knows? But I'm bullish on Neo. I'm holding my Neo. So that's Neo. I think it's good. I'm liking it. Uh, right now, that 36 area is kind of the the level to watch. If it starts to get below that, this could be a, a lower high, and we start to break, and that may reverse the trend here. So that's how you want to be watching Neo right now. Is that 36? Ideally, if we get above 40, um, you know, it's going to look like it's going higher, but could put in a little bull flag pattern here too, which would be nice offer a good secondary entry point so let's go to ethereum I'm looking at eth eth versus btc is finally kind of rounding out here but that's just because bitcoin has been in a little bit of a pullback mode here so if you look at the four hour chart last couple days ethereum has been underperforming bitcoin and most everything has been underperforming bitcoin and that's just because bitcoin was crazy strong for the last four days five days but if you look at Ethereum USD, there's two things I want to point out here. So I was talking about this um, downtrend that it finally broke. And, you know, I was watching this. Finally had that downtrend break, which is a very nice break here. And now volume was okay. It was above average. Not as much as I would like to see. But that was enough to, to get me on the trade here. But didn't see a lot of follow through. I mean, it went up, hit just below resistance, which was that 340 mark that we saw earlier in October. But now what it's doing, which I, I kind of like, I'm still holding my position here, is it's starting to, anybody guess, put a little bit of a cup and handle, very nice pattern. So I had that prior high right here, nice rounded base, found some support, starting to rise up the right side, came just below that prior high, which they tend to do when they want to form this. And now it's putting in this very tight, very quiet action here. And so if we start to bust out above 340 on Ethereum, that could be the breakout for this pattern, which at that point, in my opinion, you're going to see 370 very quickly. And then we're going to be testing the old highs near 400 if we break out. Now on a percentage basis, that's not huge, right? If you go from 340 back to the old highs, um, that's 15 16%, right? That's like, um, I mean, that's not huge, but it'd be a nice start. So I'm liking this. I'm um, hopeful and I'm holding it. But if I see that it starts to break down, you know, this moving average is catching up right now. If it starts to bust down and below this bar for sure, that's going to be kind of a failed pattern and we'll have to just give it some more time. But it's putting in this very tight pattern here over the last couple months. So definitely be watching Ethereum. Litecoin. Talk Litecoin. So I was watching the same pattern in Litecoin, and I was talking about this potential cup and handle. Now this one, 
kind of had a weird breakout, right? So we had the, the prior high right here around 69, 70 bucks or so. Same thing, had that pattern. And the handle that I was watching was right here. And instead of just like breaking out of the handle, it just started to edge higher really quietly. And that was all Bitcoin going up and Litecoin just kind of moving up in sympathy just because the BTC Litecoin chart was, you know, the, the USD price of Bitcoin was going up and was taking this up. But then we saw some news, some atomic swaps happen, and maybe that was the driver. But the the volume was there, and that was a solid breakout. And so I'm calling that a breakout on Litecoin. And right now it's just pulling back pretty good right now, not breaching any kind of technical levels. If you zoom in a little bit on the four-hour chart, you can see this secondary pullback that it's doing right now. Here's the big breakout, huge volume, very quiet pullback. So, so far, it's good. And if you look at the breakout points, it's, you know, it's right around here. And that's pretty much where this thing is consolidating right now. So very normal action. As long as this most recent low around 65 and change holds on the USD, um, this is going to most likely start to consolidate and start to inch up higher here again. And we'll see over 70 Litecoin, hopefully. But versus BTC, you know, last couple of days has been underperforming, had that breakout day. They're just pulling back right now. So that's always the choice and makes it a little bit tricky right so from a fiat perspective you're coming in and you're saying hey that's good it's not really going down but the question is always should you be in bitcoin or should you be in alts and as most of us learned in october bitcoin was the place to be and you can see the chart right it was just there was just no contest and most alts looked this way um and so we had a nice real little rally last week we've been pulling in last couple of days so We'll see if we get that second leg up. What else? A couple more. I've got like two minutes left before I got officially in this live stream because then my timer will go off. Just kidding, guys. I don't got a timer. Obviously, I went five hours last time. I don't have a timer. Let's see. So we talked Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin. If you're just joining us, I told everybody I'd keep it quick. So probably won't go over those again. Um, Neo, let's look at Omise Go and let's look at Dash. So Omise Go BTC, let me erase my lines here, zoom in a little bit. So this is the daily chart and it's, a, it's not a pretty chart. <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of all over the place here. It looked like it finally broke that low rally, just really broke down last couple of days, trying to pop here, but versus BTC is not looking strong yet. If it starts to get above this, like, you know, 105,000 Satoshi level, 106, then I'll start to change my tone there. But for now, it's just not looking nice. Um, it's trying to rally here in the very near term on the four hour. Uh, but I'm wondering if that's just a bounce rally so far. And um, I'm not convinced yet. Now versus fiat, the chart actually looks pretty good. And if you look at the daily chart, um, it's finally breaking this downtrend, trying to find a pretty good low here right around this $7 mark. And so really, if you start to get above eight on Omise Go, that's going to be a good signal, especially if the volume starts coming in, then uh, I'll be a little bit more convinced there. So the chart probably to look at is Omise Go USD and watch your signal there, um, in my opinion. But it's underperforming Bitcoin right now. That's just the fact. Um, Quantum. So check this out. Quantum had a very interesting day the other day out of nowhere just shot up quantum btc here so i've been watching two things on quantum uh was watching this downtrend and then most recently was watching this horizontal resistance and i think i mentioned this during the last live stream where it was like this might be where it pauses and just i mean to the penny almost it paused since then pulled back try to rally the other day um had this really kind of out of nowhere big pop faded most of it but now it's trying to inch up it's starting to bounce right into that descending trend line. And potentially what I'm watching here on quantum is this daily inverted head and shoulders pattern that is beginning to take place. And the breakout is, you know, the, the official neckline is kind of like across here, right? So it's somewhere along these lines, but that just happens to correspond with this descending trend line that it's been fighting for forever basically <laughs> and so that's what i'd be watching um because if it starts to you know this is kind of the the critical area right here if it starts to break above that and, the, and especially if it gets across this horizontal resistance around let's call it 191 that's gonna potentially cause you know the, the breakout that uh, might finally turn the trend on this guy here so i'm watching that pattern 
that's a, a good bottoming pattern and nice volume on the right hand side here so keep an eye on quantum for our chart looks pretty wild that was that crazy day pop right to the resistance point look at that and it came right back in so i don't think there's anything to do yet on quantum but i'd just be watching this one here dash so let's look at dash dash gave us this um really weird like quiet couple of days so i was looking at dash daily before today it's finally starting to move up but <laughs> before today i was like how many doji candles do you need to see in a row like this is the most unusual pattern it was just straight up gave it up and then just went sideways on the usd chart um, very interesting and of course it just happened to correspond with this prior high pulled right back to it it's letting the moving average catch up uh, I think it was a very constructive pause, and uh, now it's starting to inch higher. So I hold Dash in my longer-term portfolio, and so far I'm holding it. I'm liking what I'm seeing, and that was a nice consolidation here. Very, just very quiet, very tight, and uh, starting to edge up a little bit here. So we'll see where it goes. But I'm liking Dash. Dash is looking really good here. Let's look at Monero. Speaking of Dash, Monero is very tight and quiet. So this is Monero USD. Again, last couple of days just been sitting tight. Now, Monero had a nice little run a couple of weeks ago. It was one of the early movers off the lows here and had this very constructive tight pullback. And then just today is seeing this big pop and uh, maybe starting to move higher. Now the moving average is just going up. The trend is still pointing in the right direction. And this four hour chart was a good consolidation. Let some of the indicators kind of cool off and reset a little bit. And so I'd be watching Monero here. Monero over 128, 130 or so is gonna be a, a nice move up. Uh, Monero BTC looks like the same thing, right? It's been consolidating, trying to break this downtrend that it's in. And it looks like it's finally starting to edge out here. Um, and it's just like right there potentially in this in the buy range. And so I'm liking Monero all around. I'm liking Monero. Now on the four hour on the daily BTC chart, if it can get above this 10 EMA and start to head higher, that may correlate with uh, Monero moving out here on, on a new high here. So um, not new high, new, new recent high. The old high was up here around 150s or so. So Monero is looking good. Uh, let's see here. A couple more. I really do want to keep this one short, guys. Why do the markets have to go crazy on the weekends in the middle of the night? There's <laughs> no rest for the weary. Pivx. We talked Quantum. We talked Lemisa Go. We talked Litecoin. Lisk. Man, Lisk was a big winner this week. Finally had that, like, big reversal bar now consolidating. But, man, Lisk. What a move up off the lows. Um, here was your secondary entry on LISC, right? So I had that break, that big first pump, gave you a couple of hours, a couple of days of pullback, had the breakout, pulled right back to the breakout. And it's not unusual to see that throwback where they break out, come right back to that point, and then off to the races. Now, it doesn't look like a lot, but if you got in on the secondary entry, man, you were up 60, 56% very quickly. And so that was a nice move. Gave us that big volume reversal, kind of pulling in right now. But I, I think you just needed that consolidation. So if you're holding it still, just keep an eye on this moving average. Watch this little consolidation area. If it starts to break down, uh, you might want to secure some gains if you've got them. But, you know, it's, it's kind of pulling right back to this old high here. So it's not unusual. Probably just going to sit tight here for a little bit before it starts heading higher. Okay, what else? Let me go through the comments. I'm uh, just blabbering away here. So let's see here. Let's see, we got Brandon. We got some of my peeps on the call. Glad to have you guys. Bitcoin Cash bottom. So how many of you guys bought Bitcoin Cash at 2,500 and are just like praying this thing goes to 2,000 so you can sell it? <laughs> Where are we at? It's just such a wild card with the Bitcoin. I mean, look at Bitcoin's back up to 77, almost 78. Man, I'm just going to have to stay on all night and do an 8K live stream party. No, I'm not. Dash breaking out. Yep, Dash is looking really good. Um, so Bitcoin had a little shakeout. Maybe that was the, the, the shakeout here that just very briefly undercut that low, took out the stops. 
bouncing now. Um, could be. Could be. I mean, on the daily chart, it looks fine. I mean, if you're holding Bitcoin, I mean, especially longer term, you really I mean a pullback to 7,200, maybe even below, slightly below, down to 7,000 would just be normal and might actually be healthy to kind of set it up to, to have a stronger move up. Let me see here. So thoughts on Dash, we covered that. Monero covered that. Neo, we covered that. Waves gonna be huge in 2018. Let's see. Let's see what waves looks like. I was watching this one the other day. It was actually pretty strong. So this is waves dollar. I've been watching this from a longer term chart, just kind of seeing that old high there and thinking dollar chart actually looks pretty good here. If it starts to get above this 550 mark consistently, that might be a potential rally there. Waves BTC though, it's just kind of like a lot of the other ones, right? I had that nice rally a couple weeks ago but hasn't pulled back as much as some of the other names and has held up pretty good here. So, yeah, Waves is actually looking pretty good. Um, you know, right last couple of days, like everything else, underperforming. We'll see if this is the low here on this pullback, but uh, I would I would wait if it were me. If you're holding it, I mean, just doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad at all. Vic, Vertcoin. Does anybody care about Vertcoin anymore? You guys were all about the Vertcoin like two weeks ago. So had that big pullback, rallied. It was a really weird wall here. It was like a sell wall there. So far, it's underperforming, pulling back here. Um, again, not too bad, though. Actually holding up pretty good here. Lumens, man. Still, Lumens just likes to go. A little bit of a double top there on the daily chart. What else are we doing here? Ethereum is breaking out now. Someone said Ethereum is breaking out now. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. You're scaring me. So, yeah, keep an eye on Ethereum because I'm watching this little handle it's been putting in the last couple of days. This is it. It's like really tight, really quiet here. It's not going to last more than another day or two, in my opinion. So it's either going to give it up get right back down to 310 or so or it's gonna bust out of here and get above 340. so let's go ethereum why don't you guys just like somebody jamie diamond why don't you just like go buy you know i don't know just something small like a billion dollars worth of ethereum just get this thing going iota another name that has been very strong as of late um, nice rally off the lows. One of the few names, it was like IOTA, Lisk, and, and EOS this week were like the three alts that were going stronger than Bitcoin here. So it's still going. Had this big volume top here, kind of churning a little bit, pulling in a little. Nothing really crazy. If you look at the four-hour chart, I mean, just up, down, up, down, just higher lows, just looking pretty good here. Finally due for a pause, but man, IOTA. I mean, just versus Bitcoin, it's up 130% off the lows and back up to just about 80 cents USD. Finally broke that downtrend. A um, little bit volatile, but man, strong name. EOS, speaking of EOS. Another one, strong name, just still going. Has these pullbacks, quiet. Edge up gives it enough time to rest a little bit, so kind of pause in here last couple days. But um, can't argue, EOS is looking good, still going. Maybe that was the low, that was it. EOS is on the way up, you know, it's starting to hit those over overbought levels, though, at the, the big scale of things. So, getting a little exhausted here, but I mean, that's just a massive move up. And, and it granted, it's like three weeks, but. You know, 170%. It was at one point almost 200%. That's if you get the exact bottom and sell at the exact top, which, of course, nobody does. Omise Go. So we covered Omise Go very quickly. I was just looking at it. I don't really like this Omise Go BTC chart. It's a little, I don't know, it's just kind of all over the place. But it's finally putting in a little bit of a low here. Um, see if it continues on the upside. I think it's just a bounce at this point. Feels like a bounce, but you know what? Neo came out of nowhere. I mean, look at Neo. Neo did the same thing. It had this nice pattern. I thought it was about to bust out versus Bitcoin, and then Bitcoin just decided to go on a forty percent charge. Neo 
didn't want to participate, pulled back, and then out of nowhere, bam. Now, I got very lucky on Neo, I got to say, because I was just kind of doing my routine scans, watching things, and I literally saw this thing just like out of nowhere start popping and just happened to catch it the right time. Usually, I got alerts set a little bit higher. And by the time I got in, and then like an hour later, all my alerts started going off. Neo, 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 Neo. It's like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I would have missed it. So I just happened to just watch it while I was going. Caught that one. So I added. I added to the Neo today. All right, let's see if it holds up. I um, think that's it, guys. I think we covered them all, everything. Let's look at the coin market cap real quick. What the coin market cap at? Coin market cap. BitConnect. Two hundred and twenty-nine billion dollars. Bitcoin market cap. One hundred and twenty-eight billion dollars. Still king of the crypto world by far. Ethereum still number two. Bitcoin Cash. Remember Bitcoin Cash last weekend hit forty billion dollars. That was crazy. Ripple. Litecoin. Dash Neo. Litecoin Dash duking it out a little bit. I think Dash is going to overtake. But hey, I'm I'm holding both, so I'm rooting. Let's go. Both of them just move. Uh, the big winners today, as you guys know, Neo, Gas, Bitcoin Cash were the big ones. Power Ledger. Let's look at that one. That's actually been looking pretty good here. It's been added to Bitrix here recently. Power. So if we look at Power, zoom out a little bit, check out the four-hour chart. No, that ain't going to help us. Check out the one-hour chart. And so kind of putting a little bit of a low here. Uh, it was looking pretty strong earlier, but I don't know. We'll see. Kind of pulling in a little bit. Let me get some more time on power. Let's go to Binance. Let's check this one out here. So if we look at power BTC on the Binance chart, you know, it's not bad. It's kind of finding a good low here. Had that rally right into this resistance point and pulling in a little bit. So this is it. This is the key the key point to be watching here. You know, that 3,700 Satoshi level basically is been the wall so far, pulling in a little bit here. And that's, you know, on a percentage basis, it's still a decent amount from here. But if we can get above that, you know, that's 6% or so, uh, that's going to be a nice little rounding bo bottom base there. So I'll be watching that one. So power. Oh, let's see here. Meredith Rose, you love my show. Thank you for that feedback. I appreciate it, guys. I appreciate having you all here, especially when I schedule this like impromptu. Hey, let's go live. Because just like last time, I was going to do my weekly update and I'll do a video for you guys. And I'm thinking, you know, these live streams are just so much funner. Quantum, isn't quantum a scam? Yeah, that's a debatable topic. Iota, we covered Iota, we covered Vert. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to read that comment, but it's hilarious. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Do 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 EOS, Vert, Ubic. We didn't cover Ubic. I'll look at that one real quick here. I was actually watching that one earlier today. Let's see what Ubic's looking like. Ubic. It had been pretty strong last couple of days, but uh, pull it in. Actually, was looking pretty decent earlier today. Not too bad. If you look at Ubic Daily versus BTC, this is kind of the line I've been watching. Pulled back below it. Tried to rally above. Failed right at that line. Pulling in again. See if we can get back above. But that's really the line I'm watching. And if you want to be a little more conservative on that, you can just move it up. Call it basically 20,000 Satoshi, right? That's the level to be watching as far as a... Potential trend reversal, breakout, moving up, whatever you want to call it. It's not really a breakout. I mean, it kind of is, but there's not really a solid pattern there. But that's what I'd be watching. That's still a ways out, but, you know, I like to buy strength. That's 20% up. So maybe it goes to 20% and then bounces off the line. Wouldn't be a bad trade, honestly. But if it can get above it, you could, you could really start to see some movement on that. So Neo. No, it's the middle of the day. Not your day. It's the end of my day. Well, not really. It's only 10 p.m. Most of my days end a few hours from now. <laughs> so let's see here. ARC. Haven't covered ARC. Let's take a look at ARC BTC. 
Man, I was really liking Ark. I actually took a little position on Ark and then quickly it was stopped out. And yes, I use stops. And speaking of stops, okay, I'm gonna take a, a brief pause, commercial break. Let's let's go to nodeinvestor.com slash training. And many of you have already taken my course. So I've got two courses, Cryptocurrency 101, just kind of gets you going on how to use a wallet, how to use an exchange. I have an in-depth review on Jax, Exodus, and Coinbase. And I cover a bunch of other good stuff on getting started with Bitcoin, how to buy it, where to buy it. But technical analysis for cryptocurrencies is the one you guys all like. Many of you are taking it. And if you weren't already aware, I've added about another hour's worth of video where I talk about money management, stops, diversification, risk management, scaling in, all that fun stuff. And in my opinion, the most important part of this, because you could buy the right thing, you could know how to read a chart you can know how to use indicators and read bases but if you cannot manage the trade properly or manage risk properly man it's not going to be as good as it should be for you so anyway just thought i'd give you guys a little side note check it out if you've already bought the course you have access to that so back to arc yes i did use stop and uh, so what i was looking here is i was really liking this this pullback it gave us and I was like I really want it and give me a little bit of a handle and it gave me that handle and then I took it and then it went black and I got stopped out <laughs> and good thing because it's pretty much has been pulling back ever since and so you gotta you know risk management money manage that's what I'm telling you guys sometimes you get shaken out yes but that just comes with the territory but the time you don't use a stop and you don't get shaken out and it just keeps going down on you you wish you had a stop and so now that's trading accounts. If you're a long-term holder, it's definitely different, right? I mean, I don't my long-term holdings that don't keep them on exchanges, and you got to just manage them a little bit differently. They move a little bit slower. You know, I I I scale in slower, I get out slower, I give it way more room. But from a trading perspective, and I do both, um, definitely play it a little bit tighter. So ARC. Still pulling in a little bit versus BTC, and it's just this downtrend, higher, you know, lower highs. And until it starts to turn around, um, if you're debating between ARC and BTC, until I see this thing pop, you got to go BTC. I mean, that's, you know, that's where it's at right now. Um, it tried to have a good rally, hit this resistance. This is kind of the key line to be watching that 52,000 Satoshi or so. And um, that's really the one to watch. Now, you're talking to me about a longer term cup and handle and there's yes and no so here's the thing with the cup and handle so a little bit of uh technical analysis chart school here right a cup and handle by definition is a continuation pattern that you see after a rise it's a pause right it's a reset it's this right here you go up 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 and then you have this pause and you have this little cup and handle and before it breaks out and goes higher when you see a cup and handle at the low, it may still go higher, but it's not a true cup and handle by definition because it's it's not a continuation pattern. It's coming off of a downtrend, right? So yes, there's a cup and there's a little bit of a potential handle forming, but that's generally not how I'm reading it, right? I'm looking at this more from a, this is a low, this is the bounce, this is a higher low, potentially starting to change the trend here, right? So that's how I'm reading that. Not a, uh, not from a cup and handle perspective. Now in the short term, right when i was talking about the trade i was doing yeah that's different right because then you're at this point you are coming off of a rise right so when i was looking at this this was a cup and handle on the four hour chart because at that point i mean you're already i mean you are 90 percent off the ho off the lows that's huge and then i'm watching this and i'm pulling this pull back and so that's why i took that entry and i got stopped out of it all right guys note is going to start singing I'm a little teapot. No, I'm not. Can I look at Bitcoin Cash, please? I did. Decred? Yeah, I like Decred. It's not too bad. It had a pretty decent pullback here. Let's see if this holds. Um, We talked. Let's look at Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash one more time, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, no five-hour stream incoming. <laughs> not today, guys. Uh, let's see here. So Bitcoin Cash, let's zoom out a little bit. We were talking this. Go, let me go to another chart here first. First, 
Bitcoin Cash on the BTC chart. Of course, they've been uh, back and forth, back and forth. And I had a very nice rally last night, pulled in. Looking at the one-hour chart here, this little consolidation was that I was what I was watching here, and uh, kind of gave us a nice little reset. Took a little trade, but as soon as you know, this was really Bitcoin breaking down, Bitcoin Cash pumps, and then as soon as Bitcoin finds a low, Bitcoin Cash pulls in, and it's just the back and forth. Now Bitcoin Cash, however, is high beta compared to the Bitcoin, meaning Bitcoin pulls back a few percent. This thing gave you a nice twenty percent trade, and so it's very magnified from the moves perspective um, I think it found a low personally I think this uh, eight hundred thousand dollar level was kind of the low I was watching uh, what I was looking at yesterday was putting in this descending triangle pattern they tend to break to the downside and it was right here and sure enough it broke rallied right to the line kept going and stopped right around you know eight hundred eight fifty or so and here we are back up and and those moves are big I mean once from that low, it quickly gave you a 36% move. Little consolidation here today. I jumped on it here once when it broke out of this consolidation and uh, had a pretty little decent trade here. I mean, it gave you as much as 20% plus before pulling in. But when they pull in, they pull in pretty fast here. So you can see the 30 minute bar on this one. You know, in 30 minutes, it gave up a lot of that and went as far as a uh, 10, 12% down. And right now, it's kind of living below the 10 EMA on the 30 minutes. I kind of wait for a little bit of more of a consolidation here the one hour is trying to hold and it makes sense because right here it's holding right above the prior top and so ideally this is where you do want to see them bounce and so this could be a good secondary entry point here on this little pullback with the low or a stop right around that twelve hundred dollar mark or so so that's bitcoin cash and of course it's going to do it's going to react to bitcoin and right now bitcoin is you know on the near term chart it's kind of breaking down a little bit giving us give us a lower low here it's bouncing Let's see where it starts to go here but it, near term okay i'm talking like the one hour for our charts it is looking a little weak we'll see where it goes but i think the rallies are being bought up if you look at the daily chart though nothing to worry about big pump little handle pulling in Probably could go down to 7100 7200 and be just fine and actually would be very healthy to see it pull back and give us a higher low and then that would really confirm that this trend has changed and is going higher and then that would give you the the next leg up and that's what i want to see so ladies and gentlemen we did it we went live and i didn't stick to my 30 minute time but i didn't go five hours and it's i don't know 40 minutes is it really 40 minutes Man, time flies. No way. Yeah, I guess so. But, um, man, I think I'm going to have to call it done. I'm looking at the comments here. If I've got them accessible real quick, I might just peek at it just really quick. ETP, yeah, still pulling in, guys. I don't know. Let's see if this is the low. Maybe. What was the other one I was going to look at? Oh, Ethereum Classic. Of course. How can we forget about Ethereum Classic? So it's looking very much like the Monero chart where it's sitting really tight, really quiet here. This could go either way on this chart just because it it's bounced. You know, it's like right in the middle between this high and this low that it put in. It's just sitting right there. Uh, very tight, very quiet action here. On the daily, though, I would lean towards this is going higher just because it had that big pullback, but it held support and it's kind of marching up. Quiet volume, but it's been going sideways for a couple days. So if I had to guess, I would say probably higher, but looking at the four-hour chart, which I tend to lean on more, um, who knows? This could go either way. Theorem Classic. So that's it, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Bitcoin Gold. I uh, can't cover that one right now. Let me see what else. That's it. We're good. We're done. Less than one hour. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'm just kind of reading these comments, but I think we are good. Cool. All right, guys. Appreciate you joining. And don't worry. the things If things get crazy, they probably will. I'll be back on. Not today, but maybe tomorrow. So, all right, guys. Take care. Have a good night. Have a good day.
I'm out. Pretty decent couple hour trade. So it's pulling in right now. If you like Bitcoin Cash and you want to do some trading, if I were doing it, this prior top, it's sitting right there right now. It's hitting the moving average. RSI came in. Ideally, this is a good pullback entry if you like it with a very tight stop just below the most recent lows. That's like 2%, 3% if you want to give it some room. Um, but if Bitcoin just gets strong here, it's going to just keep pulling in, in my opinion. So let's see what else. Neo, and I'll cover the other big three here. Neo, wow. Neo, good old Neo. Still looking good, still looking strong. I'm still holding my Neo. And so here's what I like. Let me switch over to the USD chart because this is what I've been watching for the last couple of weeks. Look at how tight Neo USD has been. And I think I mentioned this the other night in my last video. It's just this is getting very strong, very tight, and I was getting very bullish. And we saw that pop today. And regardless of what drove it, whether it was news or rumors or some flyer that said three days, guys, this is just a good breakout. It's a good pop. And right now it's holding the breakout. And I'm liking it. Neo. It's been quiet for so long, and uh, we'll see. So far, the pullback and the little reset here is very constructive, um, and I'm liking it. So if you like it, keep an eye on it here. It's starting to consolidate. I'd like to see a couple more hours of some pausing and relaxing so that the four-hour chart doesn't look so overbought and so that the moving average on the daily catches up a little bit, but it's got more room to run in my opinion. But, you know, in this market, who knows? But I'm bullish on Neo. I'm holding my Neo. So that's Neo. I think it's good. I'm liking it. Uh, right now, that 36 area is kind of the the level to watch. If it starts to get below that, this could be a, a lower high, and we start to break, and that may reverse the trend here. So that's how you want to be watching Neo right now. Is that 36? Ideally, if we get above 40, um, you know, it's going to look like it's going higher. But could put in a little bull flag pattern here too, which would be nice offer a good secondary entry point so let's go to ethereum looking at eth eth versus btc is finally kind of rounding out here but that's just because bitcoin has been in a little bit of a pullback mode here so if you look at the four hour chart last couple days ethereum has been underperforming bitcoin and most everything has been underperforming bitcoin and that's just because bitcoin was crazy strong for the last four days five days but if you look at Ethereum USD, there's two things I want to point out here. So I was talking about this um, downtrend that it finally broke. And, you know, I was watching this pattern here too, which would be nice. Offer a good secondary entry point. So let's go to Ethereum. Looking at ETH. ETH versus BTC is finally kind of rounding out here but that's just because bitcoin has been in a little bit of a pullback mode here so if you look at the four hour chart last couple days ethereum has been underperforming bitcoin and most everything has been underperforming bitcoin and that's just because bitcoin was crazy strong for the last four days five days but if you look at ethereum usd there's two things i want to point out here so i was talking about this um downtrend that it finally broke and you know i was watching this finally had that downtrend break which is a very nice break here and now volume was okay it was above average not as much as i would like to see but that was enough to to get me on the trade here but didn't see a lot of follow through i mean it went up hit just below resistance which was that 340 mark that we saw earlier in october but now what it's doing which i i kind of like i'm still holding my position here is it starting to, anybody guess, put a little bit of a cup and handle, very nice pattern. So I had that prior high right here, nice rounded base, found some support, starting to rise up the right side, came just below that prior high, which they tend to do when they want to form this. And now it's putting in this very tight, very quiet action here. And so if we start to bust out above 340 on Ethereum, that could be the breakout for this pattern, which at that point, in my opinion, you're going to see 370 very quickly. And then we're going to be testing the old highs near 400 if we break out. Now, on a percentage basis, that's not huge, right? If you go from 340 back to the old highs, um, that's 15, 
16%, right? That's like, um, I mean, that's not huge, but it'd be a nice start. So I'm liking this. I'm um, hopeful and I'm holding it. But if I see that it starts to break down, you know, this moving average is catching up right now. If it starts to bust down and below this bar for sure, that's going to be kind of a failed pattern. And we'll have to just give it some more time. But it's putting in this very tight pattern here over the last couple months. So definitely be watching Ethereum. Litecoin. Let's talk Litecoin. So I was watching the same pattern in Litecoin. And I was talking about this potential cup and handle. Now, this one kind of had a weird breakout, right? So we had the, the prior high right here around 69, 70 bucks or so. Same thing, had that pattern. And the handle that I was watching was right here. And instead of just like breaking out of the handle, it just started to edge higher really quietly. And that was all Bitcoin going up and Litecoin just kind of moving up in sympathy just because the BTC Litecoin. I'm looking at ETH. ETH versus BTC is finally kind of rounding out here, but that's just because Bitcoin has been in a little bit of a pullback mode here. So if you look at the four-hour chart, last couple of days, Ethereum has been underperforming Bitcoin, and most everything has been underperforming Bitcoin, and that's just because Bitcoin was crazy strong for the last four days, five days. But if you look at Ethereum USD, there's two things I want to point out here. So I was talking about this... Um, downtrend that it finally broke and you know i was watching this finally had that downtrend break which is a very nice break here and now volume was okay it was above average not as much as i would like to see but that was enough to to get me on the trade here but did see a lot of follow through i mean it went up hit just below resistance which was that 340 mark that we saw earlier in october but now what it's doing which i i kind of like i'm still holding my position here is it starting to, anybody guess, put a little bit of a cup and handle, very nice pattern. So I had that prior high right here, nice rounded base, found some support, starting to rise up the right side, came just below that prior high, which they tend to do when they want to form this. And now it's putting in this very tight, very quiet action here. And so if we start to bust out above 340 on Ethereum, that could be the breakout for this pattern, which at that point, in my opinion, you're going to see 370 very quickly. And then we're going to be testing the old highs near 400 if we break out. Now, on a percentage basis, that's not huge, right? If you go from 340 back to the old highs, um, that's 15, 16%, right? That's like, um, I mean, that's not huge, but it'd be a nice start. So I'm liking this. I'm um, hopeful. And I'm holding it, but if I see that it starts to break down, you know, this moving average is catching up right now. If it starts to bust down and below this bar for sure, that's going to be kind of a failed pattern. And we'll have to just give it some more time, but it's putting in this very tight pattern here over the last couple months. So definitely be watching Ethereum. Litecoin. Let's talk Litecoin. So I was watching the same pattern in Litecoin, and I was talking about this potential cup and handle. Now, this one kind of had a weird breakout, right? So we had the, the prior high right here around 69, 70 bucks or so. Same thing, had that pattern. And the handle that I was watching was right here. And instead of just like breaking out of the handle, it just started to edge higher really quietly. And that was all Bitcoin going up and Litecoin just kind of moving up in sympathy just because the BTC Litecoin chart was, you know, the, the USD price of Bitcoin was going up and was taking this up. But then we saw some news, some atomic swaps happen, and then we as much as some of the other names, and has held up pretty good here. So yeah, Waves is actually looking pretty good. Um, you know, right last couple of days, like everything else, underperforming. We'll see if this is the low here on this pullback. But uh, I would, I would wait if it were mean. If you're holding it, I mean, just doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad at all. Vic, Vertcoin. Does anybody care about Vertcoin anymore? You guys were all about the Vertcoin like two weeks ago. So had that big pullback rallied. It was a really weird wall here. It was like a sell wall there. So far, it's underperforming, pulling back here. Um, again, not too bad, though. Actually holding up pretty good here. Lumens, man. Still, Lumens just likes to go. A little bit of a double top there on the daily chart. What else are we doing here? 
Ethereum is breaking out now. Someone said Ethereum is breaking out now. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. You're scaring me. So, yeah, keep an eye on Ethereum because I'm watching this little handle it's been putting in the last couple of days. This is it. It's like really tight, really quiet here. It's not going to last more than another day or two, in my opinion. So it's either going to give it up, get right back down to 310 or so, or it's going to bust out of here and get above 340. So let's go, Ethereum. Why don't you guys just like somebody, Jamie Dimon, why don't you just like go buy, you know, I don't know, just something small, like a billion dollars worth of Ethereum. Just get this thing going. Iota, another name that has been very strong as of late. Um, nice rally off the lows. One of the few names, it was like Iota, Lisk, and, and EOS this week were like the three alts that were going stronger than Bitcoin here. So it's still going. Had this big volume top here, kind of churning a little bit, pulling in a little. Nothing really crazy. If you look at the four-hour chart, I mean, just up, down, up, down, just higher lows. Just looking pretty good here. Finally due for a pause, but man, IOTA. I mean, just versus Bitcoin, it's up 130% off the lows and back up to just about 80 cents USD. Finally broke that downtrend. A um, little bit volatile, but man, strong name. EOS, speaking of EOS. Another one. Strong name, just still going, has these pullbacks, quiet, edge up, gives it enough time to rest a little bit, so kind of pause in here the last couple days, but um, can't argue, EOS is looking good, still going, maybe that was the low, that was it, EOS is on the way up, you know, it's starting to hit those over overbought levels, though, a daily chart, and it's, a, it's not a pretty chart, <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of all over the place here it looked like it finally broke that low rally just really broke down last couple of days trying to pop here but versus btc is not looking strong yet if it starts to get above this like you know 105,000 satoshi level 106 then i'll start to change my tone there but for now it's just not looking nice um it's trying to rally here in the very near term on the four hour uh, but i'm wondering if that's just a bounce rally so far and um, i'm not convinced yet now versus fiat the chart actually looks pretty good and if you look at the daily chart um it's finally breaking this downtrend trying to find a pretty good low here right around this seven dollar mark and so really if you start to get above eight on omise go that's going to be a good signal especially if the volume starts coming in then uh, i'll be a little bit more convinced there so the chart probably to look at is omise go usd and watch your signal there um, in my opinion but it's underperforming bitcoin right now that's just the fact um quantum so check this out. Quantum had a very interesting day the other day. I don't know where it just shot up. Quantum BTC here. So I've been watching two things on Quantum. Uh, was watching this downtrend. And then most recently was watching this horizontal resistance. And I think I mentioned this during the last live stream where it was like, this might be where it pauses. And just, I mean, to the penny almost. It paused. Since then pulled back. Tried to rally the other day. Um, had this really kind of out of nowhere big pop. Faded most of it, but now it's trying to inch up. It's starting to bounce right into that descending trend line. And potentially what I'm watching here on Quantum is this daily inverted head and shoulders pattern that is beginning to take place. And the breakout is, you know, the, the official neckline is kind of like across here, right? So it's somewhere along these lines. But that just happens to correspond with this descending trend line that it's been fighting for forever basically and so that's what i'd be watching um because if it starts to you know this is kind of the the critical area right here if it starts to break above that and, the, and especially if it gets across this horizontal resistance around let's call it 191 that's gonna potentially cause you know the, the breakout that uh, might finally turn the trend on this guy here so i'm watching that pattern that's a a good bottoming pattern and Nice volume on the right-hand side here, so keep an eye on Quantum. Four-hour chart looks pretty wild. That was that crazy day pop right to the resistance point. Look at that. It came right back in, so I don't think there's anything to do yet on Quantum, but I'd just be watching this one here. Dash. So let's look at Dash. Dash gave us this um, 
really weird, like quiet couple of days. So I was looking at Dash Daily. However, I do not want to see another dip towards 5,000. Because if we did, we would have a massive double top in place if we just went straight down here. And this would do a lot of technical damage to the charts, meaning it would be really hard if we break, if we, even if we did a double top, chances are we would bounce and then we would break it just because the chart would just be that bearish. So I know you want the dip. I know you want to buy at 5,000 or 4,800 or whatever you guys were waiting on, but Trust me, we don't want to see it dip down below this again because it's going to just create an ugly pattern that's going to be very bearish. And so what we could see, which wouldn't be bad, is to see a dip that ends you know, somewhere down in this range or even a little higher and then creates this higher low pattern and we go, right? That's ideal. We don't want to see that big deep dip. So if you missed 5,500... I mean, yeah, if, if it comes back down to it, I might take a shot at it, but I'm going to be very cautious. I would not like that. So that's what it is. Um, we're going straight up. I think we're due for a pause. And in my newsletter, I said there's two scenarios, the bearish one, which I just outlined, and the bullish one, which is we rally somewhere along the line. We pull back for a day or two, and then it's off to the races, and we make new highs over 8,000. So I'm still in that camp. I'm thinking that's the case. and I. And I'm leaning that way because the fundamentals are just so strong. There's just a lot of demand right now. There is the futures, which is coming here pretty soon. That potentially will lead to an ETF. That will lead to more hedge funds buying in. That will lead to big money institutions coming in. And I think 2018 is going to be the year where you see mass adoption across the retail investor space. I still talk to a lot of investors who are not cryptocurrency investors, but are very big, longtime veterans in stocks and options and commodities. And they're just, you know, they're starting to hear the rumors and the news, and they're starting to hear about Jack Dorsey's Square, and they're starting to see all the noise on CNBC. So they're coming. And I think 2018 is going to see more upside because of that. So I think the fundamental picture is still strong and getting stronger. And so I think this leg, this bull's got more legs to go. And so that being said, let's zoom in. The daily chart looks fine. The 10 EMA is still down around 71, 7,200 bucks. So even if we pulled back all the way to that point, um, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, if we see a big volume break to the downside, maybe, but right now it's just a constructive fullback. Now on the four hour chart, you know, if you start looking at the details and starting to get in there, um, I've been watching this all day today, this little bit rounding. We had that big shakeout last night, my, my last night. And then we had the big pop, and it just looked like, okay, maybe that was a shakeout. It's the level to be watching as far as a potential trend reversal, breakout, moving up, whatever you want to call it. It's not really a breakout. I mean, it kind of is, but there's not really a solid pattern there. But that's what I'd be watching. That's still a ways out, but, you know, I like to buy straight. That's 20% up. So maybe it goes to 20% and then bounces off the line. Wouldn't be a bad trade, honestly. But if it can get above it. You could you could really start to see some movement on that. So Neo, no, it's the middle of the day, not your day. It's the end of my day. Well, not really. It's only 10 p.m. Most of my days end a few hours from now. <laughs> so let's see here. Arc haven't covered Arc. Let's take a look at Arc BTC. Man, I was really liking Arc. I actually took a little position on ARK and then quickly was stopped out. And yes, I use stops. And speaking of stops, okay, I'm going to take a, a brief pause. Commercial break. Let's let's go to nodeinvestor.com slash training. And many of you have already taken my course. So I've got two courses, Cryptocurrency 101, just kind of gets you going on how to use a wallet, how to use an exchange. I have an in-depth review on JAX, Exodus, and Coinbase. And I cover a bunch of other good stuff on getting started with Bitcoin, how to buy it, where to buy it. But technical analysis for cryptocurrencies is the one you guys all like. Many of you are taking it. And if you weren't already aware, I've added about another hour's worth of video where I talk about money management, stops, diversification, risk management, scaling in, all that fun stuff. And in my opinion, the most important part of this, because you could buy the right thing, you could 
know how to read a chart. You can know how to use indicators and read bases. But if you cannot manage the trade properly or manage risk properly, man, it's not going to be as good as it should be for you. So anyway, just thought I'd give you guys a little side note. Check it out. If you've already bought the course, you have access to that. So back to ARC. Yes, I did use stop. And uh, so what I was looking here is I was really liking this this pullback it gave us. And I was like, I really want it. And give me a little bit of a handle. And it gave me that handle. And then I took it. And then it went black. And I got stopped out. <laughs> and good thing, because it's pretty much has been pulling back ever since. And so you got to, you know, risk management, money management. That's what I'm telling you guys. Sometimes you get shaken out, yes, but that just comes with the territory. But the time you don't use a stop and you don't get shaken out and it just keeps going down on you, you will wish you had a stop. And so now that's trading accounts. If you're a long-term holder, it's definitely different, right? I mean, I don't, my long-term holdings, they don't keep them on exchanges and you got to just manage them a little bit differently. They move a little bit slower. You know, I, I was just no contest and most alts look this way. Um, and so we had a nice real, little rally last week. We've been pulling in last couple of days. So we'll see if we get that second leg up. What else? A couple more. I've got like two minutes left before I got to officially end this live stream because then my timer will go off. Just kidding, guys. I don't got a timer. Obviously, I went five hours last time. I don't have a timer. Let's see. So we talked Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin. If you're just joining us, I told everybody I'd keep it quick, so probably won't go over those again. Um, Neo, let's look at Omise Go and let's look at Dash. So Omise Go BTC, let me erase my lines here, zoom in a little bit. So this is the daily chart, and it's a, it's not a pretty chart. <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of all over the place here. It looked like it finally broke that low rally, just really broke down last couple of days, trying to pop here, but versus BTC is not looking strong yet. If it starts to get above this, like, you know, 105,000 Satoshi level, 106, then I'll start to change my tone there. But for now, it's just not looking nice. Um, it's trying to rally here in the very near term on the four hour. Uh, but I'm wondering if that's just a bounce rally so far. And um, I'm not convinced yet. Now versus fiat, the chart actually looks pretty good. And if you look at the daily chart, um, it's, Finally breaking this downtrend, trying to find a pretty good low here, right around this seven dollar mark. And so, really, if you start to get above eight on Omise Go, that's going to be a good signal, especially if the volume starts coming in. Then uh, I'll be a little bit more convinced there. So the chart probably to look at is Omise Go USD and watch your signal there, um, in my opinion. But it's underperforming Bitcoin right now. That's just the fact. Um, Quantum. So check this out. Quantum had a very interesting day the other day out of nowhere just shot up quantum btc here so i've been watching two things on quantum uh was watching this downtrend and then most recently was watching this horizontal resistance and i think i mentioned this during the last live stream where it was like this might be where it pauses and just i mean to the penny almost it paused since then pulled back try to rally the other day um had this really kind of out of nowhere big pop faded most of it but now it's trying to inch up it's starting to bounce right into that descending trend line. And potentially what I'm watching here on quantum is this daily inverted head and shoulders pattern that is beginning to take place. And the breakout is, you know, the, the official neckline is kind of like across here, right? So it's somewhere along these lines. But that just happens to correspond with this descending trend line that it's been fighting for forever basically and so that's what i'd be watching um because if it starts to you know this is kind of the the critical area right here it's ideally if we get above 40 um you know it's gonna look like it's going higher but could put in a little bull flag pattern here too which would be nice offer a good secondary entry point so let's go to ethereum I'm looking at eth eth versus btc is finally kind of rounding out here, but that's just because Bitcoin has been in a little bit of a pullback mode here. So if you look at the four hour chart, last couple of days, Ethereum has been underperforming Bitcoin and most everything has been underperforming Bitcoin. And that's just because Bitcoin was crazy strong for the last four days, five days. But if you look at Ethereum USD, there's two things I want to point out here. So I was talking about this, um, downtrend that it finally broke and you know i was watching this 
finally had that downtrend break, which is a very nice break here. And now volume was okay. It was above average, not as much as I would like to see, but that was enough to, to get me on the trade here. But didn't see a lot of follow through. I mean, it went up, hit just below resistance, which was that 340 mark that we saw earlier in October. But now what it's doing, which I, I kind of like, I'm still holding my position here, is it's starting to, anybody guess, put a little bit of a cup and handle, very nice pattern. So I had that prior high right here, nice rounded base, found some support, starting to rise up the right side, came just below that prior high, which they tend to do when they want to form this. And now it's putting in this very tight, very quiet action here. And so if we start to bust out above 340 on Ethereum, that could be the breakout for this pattern, which at that point, in my opinion, you're going to see 370 very quickly. And then we're going to be testing the old highs near 400 if we break out. Now, on a percentage basis, that's not huge, right? If you go from 340 back to the old highs, um, that's 15, 16%, right? That's like, um, I mean, that's not huge. But... It'd be a nice start. So I'm liking this. I'm um, hopeful and I'm holding it. But if I see that it starts to break down, you know, this moving average is catching up right now. If it starts to bust down and below this bar for sure, that's going to be kind of a failed pattern. And we'll have to just give it some more time. But it's putting in this very tight pattern here over the last couple months. So definitely be watching Ethereum. Litecoin. Let's talk Litecoin. So I was watching the same pattern in Litecoin. And I was talking about this potential cup and handle. Now, this one kind of had a weird breakout, right? So we had the, the prior high right here around 69, 70 bucks or so. Same thing, had that pattern. And the handle that I was watching was right here. And instead of just like breaking out of the handle, it just started to edge higher really quietly. And that was, hmm? no, it's not. You're scaring me. So yeah, keep an eye on Ethereum because I'm watching this little handle it's been putting in the last couple of days. This is it. It's like really tight, really quiet here. It's not going to last more than another day or two, in my opinion. So it's either going to give it up, get right back down to 310 or so, or it's going to bust out of here and get above 340. So let's go, Ethereum. Why don't you guys just like somebody, Jamie Dimon, why don't you just like go buy, you know, I don't know, just something small, like a billion dollars worth of Ethereum. Just get this thing going. IOTA, another name that has been very strong as of late. Um, nice rally off the lows. One of the few names, it was like IOTA, Lisk, and, and EOS this week were like the three alts that were going stronger than Bitcoin here. So it's still going. Had this big volume top here, kind of churning a little bit, pulling in a little. Nothing really crazy. If you look at the four-hour chart, I mean, just up, down, up, down, just higher lows was looking pretty good here finally due for a pause but man iota i mean just versus bitcoin it's up 130 percent off the lows and back up to just about 80 cents usd finally broke that downtrend a um, little bit volatile but man strong name eos speaking of eos another one Strong name, just still going, has these pullbacks, quiet, edge up, gives it enough time to rest a little bit, so kind of pause in here the last couple of days, but um, can't argue, EOS is looking good, still going, maybe that was the low, that was it, EOS is on the way up, you know, it's starting to hit those over overbought levels though at the, the big scale of things, so getting a little exhausted here, but I mean, that's just a massive move up. And, and it, granted, it's like three weeks, but, you know, 170%. It was at one point almost 200%. That's if you get the exact bottom and sell at the exact top, which, of course, nobody does. Omise Go. So we covered Omise Go very quickly. I was just looking at it. I don't really like this Omise Go BTC chart. It's a little, I don't know, it's just kind of all over the place. But it's finally putting in a little bit of a low here. Um, see if it continues on the upside. I think it's just a bounce at this point. Feels like a bounce, but you know what? Neo came out of nowhere. I mean, look at Neo. Neo did the same thing. It had this nice pattern. I thought it was about to bust out versus Bitcoin, and then Bitcoin just decided to go on a forty percent charge. Neo 
didn't want to participate, pulled back, and then out of nowhere, bam. Now, I got very lucky on Neo, I got to say, because I was just kind of